This is the Behringer TO800 Vintage Tube Overdrive. We're going to look it over, check out its specs, we'll hear it and see how well it plays with other pedals, then it's on to opinions and final thoughts. Stick around. Welcome to RJ's Cave, the brokest guitar oriented channel in all of YouTube. Where else are you going to find reviews on products like this? Like most pedals these days, this is a clone of an older successful pedal, the Ibanez Tube Screw. By the way, while we're talking clones, up here in the corner, you'll find a clone video list that we put together. It's all the Behringer pedals that are believed to be clones and the pedals that they are clones of or believed to be clones of, as well as a link to the article that put together the original list. All right? And while you're there, up in that corner, there's going to be a couple other unboxing videos for more Behringer pedals, so you might want to check that out. All right? Now, as far as clones go, some clones are good, some clones not so good. This one, as we look it over, this one is plastic, with the drive, tone, level knobs on the top. We got the input on the side, on the right side, we have the output on the left side. But then we also have the 9 volt adapter jack on the right side. And 9 volt access, 9 volt battery access is done through the top. This has a spring-loaded pin right here and both sides of the pedal. That conveniently fits the Allen key that's the same size as you need to do most adjustments on uh, most electric guitars, especially if you have a Floyd Rose grip. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push this pin in. Right. Now, the pedal just should slide right off. Wiggle. There's the 9 volt battery cavity. Okay. Close it up. Got to line it up. One pin is already in. And there you go. As for specs, well, let's just take a look at the manual. All right. And yeah. Basic stuff here. Most of the specs are. Specs. And now, enough with the words. Let's hear this pedal. Okay, so I got my Holly Benton S620. We're going to be running it into my Blackstar ID440 and then into that mess of pedals right there. <laughs> Don't worry about how it looks. That's part of a bigger project. Let's just put it that way for now. All right? So now uh, we're going to be recording live. I have the webcam running, hello, and we have the Yeti microphone. So hopefully this catches a nice live atmosphere and you get a decent idea how this thing sounds. clean on the bridge we have tone about on six and a half seven the drive is all the way up and the level is even with the volume and the black star should mention that this guitar does have a very hot bridge pickup around 17k so that is going to help push this as well so what I'll do now is max overdrive on the uh, on the neck position that runs at about eight and a half K which is exactly half of the bridge and it's closer to what you would get in a less ball still sounds nice Okay, so 
now I'm going to dial this back to about just 9 o'clock. So roughly that's like 3 out of 10. We're back in the bridge position. Not as heavy to clip in, but this pickup still pushes it hard. Let's go back to the neck. to fuzz and anything in between it's not bad let's check it out with max tone and max drive that's the neck position back to the bridge For my opinions on this pedal, first we need to address some of the concerns that some people tend to have with Behringer pedals. The first being the plastic housing. It's not that bad. In my personal experience, I have never really had a problem with the plastic housing at all. I've owned a couple of Behringer pedals in the past. I still have a Behringer tuner that I purchased back, I think, in 2008, and uh, that works great. As long as you don't beat these pedals up, they're fine. And that goes for any pedal. Uh, the plastic housing isn't brittle or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about it crumbling under your fingers or anything like that. It's durable enough for daily use. Just don't beat it up. All right, so that doesn't really bother me so much. The 9 volt battery access is another one, okay? The 9 volt battery access is from the top of the pedal. Most other pedals these days, they have a battery compartment to access through the front, or the rear, or even on the bottom, and it comes with a little door. The problem with that is the door gets lost, and then you have duct tape, or you leave it open, and then the battery wires get loose and the pedal breaks or you end up with um, you, you end up with hanging batteries and things like that so it's just be its own problem so for me the, the, the little bit of difficulty compared to opening a compartment door uh, for having to access the battery through the top it's a minor thing to me and I don't I don't mind it at all Especially since most of the time we're going to use 9 volt, nine volt uh, jacks these days, 9 volt adapters. And that brings me to my third one. 9 volt adapter. You see how that's right next to the jack, right? Well, now you have to, two things have to happen. You have to have cables with that aren't overly wide in their design for the input, for going into the input. And then you're going to also have an issue with your adapters and the um, input jack cable competing for space. But now, as far as it being any good, yeah, it's a pretty good pedal. I mean, for what it does, for what it does, it sounds pretty close to a tube screamer from my ears, uh, and. Um, it didn't take long for me to plug this in the first time and get some familiar tones out of in my black star. And all I did was stop on the pedal. <laughs> you know, and it's not a tube amp, but it, it made that familiar 
uh, that, that buzz, you know what I mean? It pushed it, that familiar tone came out. So uh, it does what it's supposed to do. I purchased this for $19, well, $19, $18.99. It was shipped to my door for free. I can't really knock that, right? Do I think they're solid pedals? Yeah, I think actually they are pretty solid pedals. Do I think they should be, you know, on your permanent pro board? No, maybe not. But for your first board or for a quick replacement or something to try out, as opposed to spending $200 on a pedal and not liking it, by all means, pick these up. You know, uh, definitely this one. We have several others we're gonna be reviewing, including a, um, an octave pedal and an EQ pedal. Uh, and uh, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison with this one and another type of uh, tube speed we want, want to be down the road and then there's going to be some reviews. So if you're into pedals, stick around. We're going to be going over these quite a bit more. And then down the road even, we're going to be building pedal. If you made it this far and you enjoyed yourself, you got something out of this video, smash the like button. Consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell as well, right? Because that way you'll know whenever we post another video and we get to see you more often. All right? So everybody wants, all right? So at least consider it, okay? Uh, thanks for coming. I appreciate you being here. Uh, you've, been, you've been awesome. I've been RJ. This is RJ's Cave. Until next time, take care.